If you were one of the many people who tuned into our HashiConf opening keynote back in October of last year, you would have seen our CTO, Armand, announce the public beta of HCP Vault on Azure. Well, we're excited to announce that HCP Vault on Azure is now generally available. I'm here in the HashiCorp studio with James Bayer, who works here at HashiCorp as an EVP of R&D working on the Vault team. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Jordan. I'm excited to be here and tell everyone about the latest developments in HCP Vault. Great, so before we jump into this new release and you show off a demo on how it works, I'd love to give the audience a bit of an overview of what Vault is. So obviously Terraform and Vault, there are two most popular products on our platform, but I'm assuming that all, for all the developers out there, they're probably looking into some sort of secrets management tools for their own organization. Right, so a lot of people are looking into secrets management solutions, and Vault is a very popular uh, way to, to accomplish that. A lot of people don't realize that identity-based security is at the foundation for how we make Vault's capabilities available. So you can bring your identity to Vault if you're a system or an app. That could be a Kubernetes service account. It could be an AWS IAM or GCP IAM profile. It could be an Azure Active Directory identity. We'll take that identity and translate that into a universal identity, which then allows us to say, which capabilities in Vault do you have access to? We support secrets management, which is what we're known for, and a lot of people are using that for static secrets, which means we'll store the secret and only the right people have access to that. But increasingly, we're trying to encourage dynamic secrets. These are secrets that live for a short amount of time and then are quickly rotated. So as an example, we'll apply that to, let's say, credentials for IAM accounts for public cloud or database credentials for an app to talk to a database or for getting access to Kubernetes clusters. All of those are examples of ways that we can plug into a large ecosystem of credential providers to use dynamic secrets. Another very popular use case for Vault is certificates management. So who hasn't used a website that all of a sudden stopped working because a certificate expired? I know I have. So Vault tries to treat certificates very much like a secret. So we can rotate them very quickly and seamlessly and in an automated way so that you don't have that challenge of having a certificate expire unexpectedly. And then finally, Vault is used for key management. So a lot of people need to use encryption keys and decryption keys with their software, and Vault can uh, hold that encryption key and provide it to software like databases and vSphere encryption volumes and things like that. So that if you have a database backup and the encryption key was, came from Vault, that database backup won't be useful unless you can check out the decryption key from Vault. So those are some of the examples of the way people use Vault. Thanks for giving us that great rundown on Vault. And one customer story that I'd love to just take a brief minute to discuss is Vodafone's use of Vault. So Vodafone, they needed a solution to secure streams of analytics. And one of the main challenges that Vodafone ran into was they needed a way to rotate keys and manage key lifecycle on server side. And they also needed features like role-based access control, like similar to like RBAC, right? And that could also separate out administrative encryption and other encryption roles. Yes, Vodafone is a very exciting use case, Jordan. I'm happy to explain a little bit about it. So they wanted to use Vault with Google Cloud, and they had to process a very large volume of transactions to protect their customer data. And what I'm talking about here is personally identifiable information, things like payment information. And so they had a very high volume, 10 million encryptions per second, which translates into 36 billion encryptions per hour. So it's a really high volume of data. Ultimately, Vault and Google Cloud together came together to protect Vodafone's customer data. Yeah, and it's great to see that customers like Vodafone are adopting Vault into their stack. And previously to this launch, Customers using HCP Vault, they were only able to support workloads that were running on AWS. And so it's, that was great for some of our customer base, but many organizations that we've seen, they use Microsoft Azure as their primary cloud environment. So it's great to see that your product teams address this feedback with our new HCP Vault on Azure launch. Yes, HashiCorp has always been a multi-cloud solution and we're trying to make sure all of our cloud properties and services support all the different clouds. So we're really excited to continue our longstanding partnership with Microsoft and make HCP Vault generally available on Azure. So I wanna tell you a, lit, a little bit about HCP Vault on Azure. So 
what you normally have to do when you set up Vault is spend a lot of time setting up the clustering and configuration, getting your logs and your metrics and all those kinds of things out of the way. With HCP Vault on Azure, you have a push button deployment that in minutes you can have access to and just start focusing on using Vault, using all those use cases I spoke about earlier, and not so much focus on operating Vault yourself. We have different tiers like dev and standard and uh, clustering and all kinds of capabilities that make it easy to upgrade. That's great. And so I think that we would love to just see a demo of how easy it is in HCP to deploy a cluster to Azure. Would you be able to show us how you do it? Yeah, I'm happy to do that. So let's take a look at it. So the first thing I want to show you is we have both support for AWS and Azure. Really easy to choose between the two different um, clouds right now. So we also have this drop down here where I can choose between a development environment, it's really small, to up all the way to complete production size clusters with small, medium, and large, makes scaling really easy. Then we can choose our network. So in this case, we're gonna be using a private network on Azure. And when you set up those networks, um, you have access to all the different regions that we support in Azure today. So that's Asia, Europe, and North America. And now we can go back and finish the setup on the clustering page so I can choose between my public uh, endpoint or a private endpoint. And then finally, I'm going to choose uh, if I want to get uh, started with a template. And I'm going to use a key value secrets because that's the most common use case. And I hit the button here. And in just a few minutes, I have my production grade cluster ready to go. So let's go ahead and take a look at this is one I set up earlier. As you can see, it's, the status is running. It's on Azure. It's running the latest patch version of Vault. So you don't have to worry about the upgrades and keeping those up to date because we handle that for you. And so now I want to show you a little bit what it's like to access Vault once you had it stood up in the cluster. So we're going to use the CLI. I'm going to quickly expand the instructions, copy this value here that tells me where my cluster that I just set up is. I paste that into my terminal. So now my terminal knows where I'm pointed at Vault. Now I'm going to go log into Vault. Again, just a quick copy of this command, paste it in there. Now I'm logged in. And now I'm going to pull out the value for the key value secrets engine. So I'm using the KV command. I'm going to get this secret. It's called the secret mount. The field is called my first secret, and the secret name is the sample secret. So I hit enter. There it is. Vault is the way. That's the, the, the secret we put in for you. It's super easy to get started. So I saw when you were doing the demo, you could choose between different regions. Would you be able to talk a little bit more about what regions are currently supported? Happy to do that. So Microsoft has invested a lot of resources and data centers all around the world on different continents. So they're in North America, Europe, and Asia Pacific, and we support a wide variety of regions in those locations. And additionally, we're gonna to listen to our customers to see about adding additional regions in the future. Well, thank you so much for that awesome demo of HCP Vault on Azure. I think it's really exciting to see how easy your team made it to deploy Vault into Azure from the HCP platform, because all it really takes is just a few clicks, and that removes a lot of the grunt work out of the entire process. So for all the developers out there that want to try it out for themselves today, where do you recommend they go to get started? Well, for starters, you can look at the link on your screen and follow that link, and you'll get access to a bunch of resources, including our blog announcements. And you could also log into our HashiCorp Cloud platform and just get started today. Great. Well, that's easy enough. Thank you so much for being here and showing off this new exciting release. Thank you, Jordan. I appreciate it being here.